Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on the View From The Crowd YouTube channel and today we are going to be previewing the 2020 Sakia Grand Prix. So this is the second week in a row that we're going to be in Bahrain but unlike the races in Austria and the races at Silverstone we're actually going to get two different layouts and, <laughs> and this weekend we're going to the so-called Oval Track. Yeah, it is, it's more like a square, but it's, it's been considered this oval track. And we're going to be looking at 87 laps, which is, I think the most at the moment that we have is usually Monaco, which is about 71, um, 71 75 laps. Uh, this one's going to be 87 laps, with each lap being most likely under a minute. So it's going to be by far the quickest track that we go to. It's got basically three straights and a bit of a wiggle at the top. Um, I could insert a picture of the track here. Like you, you'll get to see. It's a, it's a bit of a weird one. And it's one that I think a lot of fans have been looking forward to since it was announced onto the calendar. Especially to see how Ferrari were going to get on. And especially with um, their poor engine and their... Um, well, the pretty... Well, one at the start of the season was pretty poor aero, but it is getting, it's getting better. Um, so yeah, but before we get into the new, well, into previewing this Grand Prix, a lot has happened. I've resisted making this video for a couple of days now, just because I needed to make sure that all the news was out before I made this, just to make sure that that I don't miss anything or something big breaks and it doesn't it doesn't come with my um review well preview so yeah let's just let's just jump into what's been going on in the last week so we start with the big news Lewis Hamilton will not be competing this weekend he tested positive for covid on it was monday or tuesday i can't remember exactly when but positive test means he can't race and will be self-isolating self -isolating throughout this Grand Prix weekend and a couple of days into next week and he should then be back for Abu Dhabi pending a negative test of course um, so it's left an open, open seat at Mercedes and oh, the drivers must have been going mental especially the ones in the Mercedes program going I want that car I want to drive that car I want to you know have a chance to win a Grand Prix in that car um, Stoffel van Dorn was already off to Bahrain well he was off with the team because he was going to be doing testing and then of course uh, Esteban Gutierrez was also a name that was being fluttered about because he's a part of the Mercedes program he didn't get the shot Jensen Button was absolutely begging on Twitter to be um <laughs> to be let in that car and Nico Hulkenberg confirmed pretty much immediately that he will not be racing in that car so yeah. so the driver that Mercedes eventually picked is none other than Williams driver and Mercedes junior driver George Russell now this is great this is this is brilliant because this is George's chance to get his first point in Formula 1 and if he out qualifies Valtteri Bottas on Saturday, I think it could spark the start of his Mercedes career from next year. And I honestly think that if George comes into this race, out qualifies Bottas, beats Bottas during the race, I'm going to. I could put a lot of money to say that George Russell will be a full-time Mercedes driver for 2021. Now, of course, this is a huge opportunity for George. He's going to have, you know, it's not like this, this is his first outing in Formula 1. He's been in this um, sport for nearly two seasons now. Um, he's been working very closely with Mercedes. He does testing with them, um, does young driver testing, end of season testing with Mercedes and not with Williams. Um, so he's pretty familiar with the car, with the team. This isn't an alien environment for him. Of course, he hasn't driven. I don't think he has driven the W11 at all. Uh, I don't think 
because there's been no sort of like mid-season, t- well there, there was some mid-season testing but George was not involved in that. Um, so this will, so Friday will be his first experience in the W11. I'm sure he'll going to love it because anything's got to be better than that Williams. Um, but oh, oh, I really, really cannot wait. I really cannot wait to see what George does in that car and I think that goes for the rest of the F1 paddock. Now of course this has left a seat open at Williams which was which has been given to a Williams young driver Jack Aitken who was driving for Campos in F2 for the last couple of seasons. He's been in F2 for a little while now but he was formerly of the Renault Academy but now he moved to Williams at the start of this season and now he's got his break in Formula 1. Um, and if everything transpires the way I said with George getting the seat, I imagine it probably would be Jack Aitken who would be the one who steps in full time uh, at Williams. But of course, we've got to see how he gets on. Uh, we've seen Nicholas Latifi pretty struggle quite a lot and been out qualified, out race pretty much in every race this season from George Russell. So it'll be see- interesting to see how Jack Aitken does. I imagine he'll probably be starting towards the back of the grid. I don't think he really has. Um, the ability to do what George does on a Saturday. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he gets along, but hopefully this will be um, Jack's, you know, chance to shine in Formula 1. It's the first real opportunity he's got, and I'm sure he'll make the most of it. Now, the rest of the news really revolves around Haas. Of course, they had two driver's um, seats open for next season. Before that, of course, they do have a driver's seat open this weekend because uh, Roman Grosjean is only just... I think yesterday at the time of recording this was released from hospital after his really nasty crash at the Bahrain Grand Prix. So of course he was never really going to be fit to drive this weekend. So it is Pietro Fittipaldi who has been uh, chosen. He is the reserve driver for Haas for the season. So he's naturally stepped up to take his place this weekend. So it will be a nice little outing for him. However it will be bittersweet because he knows he won't actually have a seat at Haas next season. That is going to... Uh, two other young drivers will be going to Nikita Marzipin, um, who's currently competing in F2, and Mick Schumacher, who is looking like he's on course to win the F2 Championship at the moment. Of course, there's still one round to go, um, with Callum Eilat still very much in the in the battle for that, but it has been confirmed it will be Nikita Marzipin and Mick Schumacher, who will be driving for Haas in 2021. Um, it's exactly what Haas needed. They needed some fresh new life in that team. It has been crumbling and disintegrating um, beneath them. So it's it's going to be interesting to see um, how they do with the two young drivers in the team. And hopefully it works out. I think we're all very much looking forward to seeing Mick in Formula 1. Um, it's great to see the Schumacher name back in Formula 1. So... I think we're all happy for him. I think people are more concerned about Nikita Marzipin just because if rumours are to be believed, it's looking like his dad may soon own the Haas F1 team um, after Gene Haas has, it looks like he's getting pretty fed up with uh, throwing money down the drain um, at a team that just isn't working and Nikita Marzipin's dad is a very wealthy Russian and um, is looking like he's willing to buy the team and um, keep his son in a, in a seat. So... It'd be interesting to see what goes on, of course, with Haas in the coming seasons. But we know for certain that they have a driver lineup for next season. The only driver we're actually waiting on to sign a new contract at the moment is Lewis Hamilton, who, well, he's not racing this weekend, so <laughs> we'll have to see. So now, finally, we can get on to previewing this race. Um, it's going to be a very power reliant race, as you can imagine and ones where team will be probably running quite high engine modes they'll probably um yeah it'll be probably very much monza sort of downfall setup so if you look at the results from monza we could probably get a better idea of how this race is going to play out but you never know it's going to be a lot of overtaking a lot of action predicted for this race be interesting to see how it plays out. Mercedes, of course, as we always start with them, are the favourites to win. They did a great job in Bahrain last weekend. They got the quickest car, and I think if it wasn't for complications or running through, um, having to get through traffic, I think the Mercedes probably would have just absolutely waltzed to victory in Monza. Of course, things didn't pan out that way, but 
expect the Mercedes to be fast. Uh, whether or not it would be <laughs> Valtteri Bottas or George Russell setting the pace is actually very much unknown. I think um, this weekend we're going to see the true pace of George Russell you know, in the fastest car for the very first time. Um, there's no doubt that George is a great driver. We've seen it time and time again. But it's now his chance to show his real Sunday pace. You know, we've seen his Saturday pace. We know it's good. And we know that he's probably going to do well this weekend. Probably get at least Q3. Um, if he's able to settle that car, you know, in sort of all the three practice sessions. Um, but if he's able to get through, it's time that we saw his race pace. Because he's always been slightly disappointing. It's always been slightly lacking compared to his quality pace. So if he's able to, you know, get comfortable with that car quickly, I think we can see something special from George. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to win it, but I'm just saying he has the potential to do very, very well. Now, as for Red Bull, it's not... Low down the force, high speed is never sort of um, Red Bull's forte. They didn't do particularly well in... Um, in Monza, and I'm not predicting them to do particularly well in Bahrain either. Um, Albon and Verstappen have actually been very positive. They've been um, about this weekend saying that they think their car's going to run well. Personally, I don't think it's going to be that simple. I don't, I don't think it's going to be that straightforward, and I don't think we're going to see a double Red Bull podium this weekend. I think, you know, that car we all know that it's designed for high downforce tracks, and that's why the sort of the normal barring circuit has it kind of worked for them last weekend. It's got a lot of slow corners, a lot of long corners, perfect for their car. I think that sort of second sort of wiggly sector could be a benefit for Red Bull, but I think they could potentially struggle. It would be interesting to see if their low down force setup is you know works well. We saw in Monza that it didn't particularly work well and they had issues coming out of the rears that race. So We'll just have to wait and see. Now a team that did very well in Monza, and I'm expecting to do well again this weekend, is McLaren. They're third in the constructors. They took a huge haul of points away from Bahrain. And I don't think many of us predicted that McLaren would do that well. You know, fourth and fifth, excellent result. But it's now they need to keep this momentum going. Um... They, they struck lucky, they just need to maintain this gap. They've got quite a nice, healthy little gap now to racing point in fourth. However, they just need to make sure that they're maintaining because I reckon the racing points are going to be very, very quick this weekend. It's a nice little segue. Racing point. Um, if you watched or listened to the Grid Talk podcast, um, one of the people that are on there, Owain, he sort of theorised that um, what what they're gonna what racing point um are gonna do or one of these teams gonna do they're gonna have an engine failure whacking a new engine for that car crank it up because they can um for this weekend absolutely blitz it around this track and then just chuck in an old engine for abu dhabi and that is the um <laughs> the benefit that sergio perez has this weekend he's gonna get a new engine it's going to be very different from the one they exploded last week. So, fresh engine in that racing point. They're probably going to turn it up a little higher than usual. It's going to work very well in a very power sensitive, in a you know low, low down, low, low down for setup. I think it could be very good for racing point. Lance Stroll didn't have a great race. Didn't have a great quality. Didn't have a great race. He'll be wanting to get something from this race. And racing point in general will be one again get something from this race you know they suffered pretty badly didn't get many well didn't get any points last weekend lost their third place in the constructors they're going to need to pull out something special this weekend so Renault they kind of caused their own issues last weekend and it wasn't particularly brilliant race they're sort of losing um, places on McLaren and while they did gain slightly on racing point I don't think their car is going to be the best for this weekend I look back at Monza and think yeah, it wasn't the greatest race for them, um, but we will have to wait and see. It was nice to see Esteban Ocon kind of get back into his groove, so whether or not he'll be able to sort of take the challenge to Daniel Ricciardo is very much unseen, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of unsure what to expect from from Renault this weekend. Um, it's, it's just hard, it's hard to say. Um, I mean, we looked at fast tracks like Imola, 
Um, we and they were quick, and they were expecting them quick to be in Turkey, but they weren't that quick in Turkey. So it's they just need to find a level of consistency. Of course, it's a bit late in the season. This is the penultimate round of this uh, this year's season. So it's um, it'd be interesting to see what they can do. I haven't got high hopes for Renault, but they could always surprise me. Now on to Ferrari. Now Ferrari, I think the main reason why most people have been looking forward to this race is just to see how Ferrari gets on and if Ferrari um, <laughs> are able to even compete at all with their engine and their aero. You know, as I've already mentioned, their aero has been getting better, but their engine has not been getting better. And oh, it's they weren't particularly brilliant last weekend. Uh, Charles Leclerc very much lucked into points um i don't think they really deserved any points from last weekend but um it's just the way uh things work in formula one sometimes um vettel was having a stinker he said the car was undrivable not sure if they're going to be able to fix that a sort of real sort of issue um between last weekend and this weekend um yeah it's a, it's going to be a tough race i can think it's going to be a, a tough race again for ferrari and um points don't seem to be really on the car now, Alpha Tauri did win the race in Monza, had very good pace in Monza, so, um, <laughs> I mean, it's the least sort of base to sort of go off, but in the last Bahrain Grand Prix, they looked fairly decent, and Pierre Gasly was doing his thing, he made the sort of, the one stop kind of work, he was kind of um, lucky with the safety car and everything, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, is, I think this could be a good race for them. It would definitely be one where they're going to be ahead of the Ferrari, probably challenging the Renaults. Um, whether or not they're up there with the racing points in the McLaren's is unknown, but I think they'll be definitely looking to at least get ahead of the Ferraris and the Renaults, or at least compete with them or fight with them during the race. Um, you've got plenty of chances for overtaking and different um, strategies in this race. So um, I think racing, uh, racing point, Alpha Tauri could be doing, you know, what they've done all season, you know, just qualify just outside the top 10 or just in the sort of lower ends of the top 10, do a great strategy, get maximum points from each weekend, move on. Now onto the Ferrari customer calamity teams of Alfa Romeo and Haas. Um, poor weekend for them last weekend. And I'm not expecting much different. You know, they've got that poor Ferrari engine in the back. Now the car really has a brilliant aero. Um, you know, just for Haas, it'll be interesting to see how um, Fittipaldi does. Um, it'll be the fourth Fitt uh, Fittipaldi to compete in Formula 1. Uh, I don't think um, any family can really uh, boast that. You know, you've got, well, next year you'll have three Schumachers. You've only two Hills. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a... Uh, there's probably various other ones that I've I've missed there, but um, yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to see how he gets on. Um, you know, being a harsh reserve driver, of course, it's a team he's comfortable with. I'm um, not sure how much testing he's done in the car. I think he has done quite a significant amount of testing because it'd be the only reason why he'll be allowed to race because of super license requirements and the point system in there. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, he'll do well um kevin magnuson i imagine just will just get on with it like any other weekend it'll be a second to last race in formula one so he'll be looking just to you know go out and hopefully just you know cruise to the end and make it enjoyable for himself because for the team it's it's a uh, bit a bit dire i'm just touching on alfa romeo it's <laughs> They were having more scraps of themselves, really, and probably Sebastian Vettel um, than really scrapping with any of anyone else in the field. So, yeah, probably going to be near the back, probably out in cube. Um, one for them, just standard um, Alfa Romeo things, really. Now, finally, on to Williams. We've got Nicholas Latifi and Jack Aitken in the car. Um, Nicholas Latifi just really just isn't showing much, but he'll be... I think he'll definitely be hoping that um, he out-qualifies Jack at least. Um, I think that um, <laughs> that feat isn't exactly impossible for him. I think it's quite likely that he'll um, out-qualify Jack Aitken. But um, I am really looking forward to seeing how Jack, Jack Aitken does. And, you know, 
I hope he does well, followed his um, F3 and his F2 career fairly closely, so it is a, it's honestly an amazing opportunity for him, and I really cannot wait to see him in the Formula 1 car. I hope he does well, because it looked for, I think it's looked for quite some time that his chance in Formula 1 would never come, I think, um, when he left Renault, because the Renault Driver Academy is pretty crap and doesn't really promote his drivers. The last Renault uh, Academy driver to actually promote it into the main team was Jolian Palmer, so... Says a lot, especially now they're bringing um, instead of Guan Yu Zhou or Lungard, they're bringing bloody Fernando Alonso into the car. It just doesn't make sense for me. Um, I think a Aiken's done very much done the right move by uh, getting the hell out of, um, of Renault, joining Williams alongside Jamie Chadwick, and um, being a part of that young young drivers team. And he's now finally got his shot, and I think it's honestly it's brilliant, and I can't wait for him to you know have a shot and hopefully prove that he's good enough to be in Formula 1 because um, a lot of people have thought that he would never get here especially with the way that young drivers are and the, he doesn't really have the money behind him but he does have a lot of talent so fingers crossed it works out. So that's it, that's my preview for the 2020 Sakir Grand Prix. It's a unique track with a unique grid, oh, it's so many unknowns. Um, I can't wait. I'm probably actually going to sit down and watch Friday practice for the first time in quite a long time just to see how George, um, George Pietro and Jack get along in their new cars. Um, so yeah, really, really looking forward to it. Really hope it all goes well. And <laughs> yeah, really looking forward to this weekend. So guys, that is all from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, make sure to leave a like. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to turn notifications on for whenever I upload. Um, if you're not already following my blog, uh, the link for that will be down in the description below. Um, I still, at the point of recording, I haven't actually written my review for the last Grand Prix. That's just because... I, I, honestly, it's hard to sort of write about that Grand Prix, especially after the first lap incident with Roman Grosjean. Um, I'll probably get a, uh, get a, that out probably before this uh, race. Um, well, this video comes out. So, guys, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. My name is